Hello and welcome to today's video. Today is going to be very interesting. We're going to be talking about magnesium sulfate, also known and probably better known as Epsom salts, and how this magical mineral can help you with almost anything. It almost universally across the board is helpful in, in healing. There's a couple of specific conditions that it can be really helpful with, being chronic fatigue syndrome, fatigue de uh, energy deficits, and food sensitivities, particularly sulfur, oxalates, and salicylates. But we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So this is going to be a profound video. This is going to give you one of the most powerful tools that I used in my my own personal journey to healing, and I use it with with to be honest, probably the majority of my clients as well, because it's just such a universally applicable tool. So today we're talking about magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts. And this is something, so first let's talk about how to source it. I've got a really good hack for you, first of all. So the dosage is the key here. It's a really, really important part of why this works so well. So I'm just going to give you a couple of tricks to source this in a really, really cheap and affordable way, because we do have to, we can be using some potentially quite high doses. So we'll get onto that. So I would definitely not recommend you buy this like on Amazon or in your health food store for like, you're buying like the one kilogram packet for like 10 pounds, $15, 12 euros, something like that. It is an absolute rip off. It's like the biggest scam ever. You can buy 25 kilogram bags, you buy it in bulk and you get that for like $25, 25 pounds, 25 euros. So instead of getting one kilogram for like 10 pounds, you get 25 for 25. It's so much better to buy it in bulk. And with the doses that we're gonna be talking about in this video, you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that you get, you're buying in bulk, otherwise this will break the bank. But if you buy it in bulk, you won't, you won't have a problem. It's very, very affordable. So the best places you can find this, you can look on eBay. Sometimes you can find it on eBay, that's a nice place to get it. You can also look on um, spa suppliers. So like um, bulk distributors to spas, they usually sell Epsom salts in 25 kilo uh, bags. This is because those flotation tanks that they use, they're full of Epsom salts. And that's what makes you float. It changes your buoyancy, so you float on top of that water. So that's that's one place you can go to get it. You can also get them from uh, agricultural stores. So I actually travel about 30 minutes in the car, and there's like a farm store where they sell like fertilizers and pesticides and, and stuff like that. So you want you can go to places like that, or you could even find these kind of things online, and you can just buy Epsom salts. It's used as an organic fertilizer. So you can just buy like big bags of Epsom salts, and it's like super cheap. I, honestly, I get... 25 kilograms of Epsom salts for like 11 euros. It's absolutely insane how, how, how good it is to get it from a place like that. And it, it's the same stuff. You know, I know some people will say like, you shouldn't get it there. It's got like toxins, it's got heavy metals. It's got, it's not good quality. Honestly, like it, it, it's fine. It's again, as I'm saying, trying to say in all my videos, you don't have to be perfect to heal. It's, it's good enough. It, it works. It's really affordable. And for the doses that you need, you, you're not going to be buying medical grade otherwise, unless you're like a multimillionaire, just, just, do it one of these cheap and effective ways. So one of the reasons that this works so effectively is a lot of people actually have a sulfur deficiency. Sulfur, so Epsom salts being magnesium sulfate, is providing your body with both magnesium and sulfur. And these are two minerals, two nutrients that most people have deficiencies in. Magnesium works like a stress macro mineral in your body. So if you have any kind of stress, this is like physical stress from toxicity, from food sensitivities, from any type of nutritional deficiency, parasites, yeast candida, anything, any kind of stress on a physiological level, magnesium will help your body cope. And also other types of stress. So like training and working out, like psychological and emotional stress. Say you have a, a stressful job. Say you record videos for YouTube or something, you know, that's stress, right? So you've got kids, that's stress. Any kind of stress, your body will burn through magnesium really fast. And you can just replace it super easy through your skin, transdermally with Epsom salts in a bath. It's one of the best, best ways to do it. It's also really nice because um, taking Epsom salts or taking magnesium supplements, like as an oral, as an oral supplement, absorption isn't as good for some people and can cause diarrhea or digestive discomfort. And a lot of people have food sensitivities and you don't tolerate things orally. So this is, I, I love anything that's healing that we don't have to put in the gut because normally the gut's a bit sensitive and we've got a lot going on there. So it's one variable we just don't even have to put in the gut. 
so magnesium everyone knows magnesium is important right if if you're if this is if, if this, this is the first or the 50th video of mine that you've watched, I'm sure you've watched some other type of alternative health stuff and you, you know how important magnesium is. So I'm not going to harp on about that because you already know it. Something that doesn't get as much attention and it really should, it should get just as much attention as magnesium is sulfur. Sulfur is so important. It's the precursor to one of your primary antioxidant systems. So with like glutathione, for example, NAC is a sulfur molecule that also functions as an, as an antioxidant. And you use sulfur in so many different detoxification processes. It is so important and it's so underrated. And the reason that we, we don't have so much of this is we used to get a lot from just any food that was, was rained on. So um, cows that eat grass that has been rained on, they would, they would get sulfur in the form of MSM, methanol, methyl sulfanomethane, which is, a, which is a type of sulfur. And you would get this, it basically is, it was in the rain. So you could get it from grass or animal products, you could get it from any vegetation that you would eat that was like organic and had, had rain on it. You would get enough of this. You just don't get enough of it. And with modern farming and pollution that we have in the world and like chemtrails and geoengineering, stuff that's sprayed in the skies, animals not being fed their appropriate diets, pesticides and stuff, we just don't, you just don't get this anymore. You don't get enough of this sulfur and you'd normally get it in every single thing. Literally, if it's rained on, you would get some of this MSM, some of this sulfur, and you just don't get it now. So we need to put that back in somewhere. And yeah, you can use an MSM supplement or you can try and prioritize more sulfur containing foods. And I'd suggest you do all of these things, but there's some magic about sulfate and there's some magic about putting it in through your skin. It just, it just achieves some amazing, amazing stuff. So it's really helpful from a nutritive perspective as in we need, we need magnesium and we need sulfur just for our body to function. Sulfur is actually one of the most abundant minerals. It's, 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 it's um, debated, but it's somewhere between the fourth and the seventh most abundant mineral in the human body. So it's really, really important. You have a lot of it inside your body. You need it for your teeth, for your nails, for your hair, for your skin. Every single cell uses sulfur. It's super, super important. So just covering it from a nutritional deficiency perspective is really cool but there's even more benefits from having more than just the bare minimum to reach your nutritional requirements so one of the so i was looking at some studies the other day because i've experienced most of these benefits anecdotally seeing them myself and with my clients so i was trying to understand a little bit more about like why how does this actually work and i stumbled upon a really interesting study pretty gruesome anytime i'm seeing animal trials and like they're doing testing on mice and stuff it always kind of like makes me cringe a little bit because like they kind of like talk to the animals, but that's kind of the cost of science sometimes. So yeah, this is a bit grotesque, but I'm going to tell you because it's interesting data. So they would basically get these mice and they would asphyxiate them. So they would basically deprive them of oxygen and they would eventually asphyxiate and, and die. And they, they split the, the, the mice up into different groups and provide them with different levels of sulfate literally as like epsom salts providing them with sulfate to see how this impacted like the damage that was done to their brain to their mitochondria to their cells and it was it was literally like the more epsom salts they were exposed to the the better the results were and what the results were was it reduced the damage that was done it reduced damage to, to lipids so this is a super important concept if you if you understand the fact that your mitochondria have a bilipid membrane around the outside. So, which means they've got this, like this layer of, of fat that goes around the outside of the, of the mitochondria. When this lining is damaged, when your body is trying to synthesize energy from glucose and carbohydrates, instead of producing an energy molecule, it produces a reactive oxygen species. Uh, uh, and, and it's like a, the opposite of an antioxidant and it damages your body. It damages your other mitochondria and creates a, an inflammatory cascade that is, massively massively harmful this is basically what's happening in chronic fatigue syndrome on a cellular level and what they found is that the more epsom salts they gave them the the less this happened the the less this fat layer was damaged that it just had this lipid protective effect so it, it basically functioned as an extremely powerful antioxidant especially for for fats which is really important looking at it through, through this lens of like a mitochondrial perspective so it acts as helping the body deal with basically stress, reactive oxygen species on a, on a chemical level. So imagine combining the benefits of sulfur in, in the form of sulfate with magnesium. It's like a superpower. 
If you've got any kind of chronic health problem going on, you probably have excess inflammation. You're probably in a repair deficit. And these things themselves create stress. You're also probably stressed, you know, because if you have a health problem, you're probably worrying about money because you're like, can I work? Will I be able to show up on time? Will I be able to get this done? If you have kids on top of this, like that's crazy. You're stressed about your diet. You're stressed about the food sensitivities. Like you've got all this stress. Providing these extra, this buffer, is just profoundly helpful. And now I want to dial into a couple of situations where this is really helpful. So in CFS, in the CFS model, again, you're providing magnesium, providing Sulfur, both super helpful. You've got this antioxidant sparing effect, this protective mechanism, also super, super helpful. This, this, um, this mechanism that I described is the most prevalent in a CFS kind of situation, especially with a CFS that's manifesting as mitochondrial dysfunction. So energy, energy synthesis is inhibited and then you get this really horrible or really poor ability to recover from exercise or from stress afterwards. This just completely changes the game. It completely changes how this, how this is working. Probably have to work up slowly. We're going to, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Let's just talk a bit more about the benefits. So the other place I see this really helpful is when you've got sensitivities to foods, particularly sulfur intolerance, oxalate intolerance, and salicylate intolerance. Metabolizing all of these things. So metabolizing the oxalates and salicylates uses sulfur. It, it requires sulfur in your body. And getting, like, if you're at the point where you have, like, oxalate or salicylate problems, you're probably on a restricted diet, and it's probably really hard for you to get enough dietary sulfur. Providing it through the skin just bypasses this whole problem. And I've, I've witnessed this, like, hundreds of times for, my, for myself and for, for clients as well. When you work on building this dosage up over time, the level of tolerance that you experience around these foods that you're sensitive to increases. So you'll be able to tolerate higher levels of oxalate and higher levels of salicylate. So you might, it might not be the thing that like, like fixes it and, and like cures the intolerance. That is still possible, but obviously everybody's different and there may be other factors that are contributing to your recovery for that. But almost across the board, getting those sulfate levels up and then maintaining that over an extended period of time basically directly increases the, the capacity of tolerance. So the, the, the salicylate bucket gets bigger, the oxalate bucket gets bigger, and we're able to tolerate things uh, better, especially for those two. Sulfur is a bit tricky because if you have sulfur intolerance, it sounds a bit counterintuitive that you should supplement with magnesium sulfate because it has sulfur in it. Thing is, I find over and over and over again, if you have a sulfur intolerance, you are probably sulfur deficient. And the reactions that you're having are kind of paradoxical reactions where it's possible you're having reactions because you don't actually have enough. Your body is like using the sulfur that you provide it and then it runs out and then that's triggering a reaction. Or the sulfur is involved in a detoxification process that's mobilizing certain toxins and your body can't keep up with that. So a really common one is mercury. Mercury and thiols, phthalates, really connected with, with uh, mercury. So if you have like sulfur intolerance and uh, intolerance to the thiols and the phthalates and things like that, mercury toxicity might be something you want to look at. But again, your body processes mercury out of your body using lots and lots of sulfur. So it's really, really important. So how do we do it? This is the tricky part because you have to start really, really slow and you have to build your dose up gradually and gently over time. So what does that actually look like? I would, first of all, I would try just doing a hot bath and see how you tolerate it. A lot of people think they don't tolerate Epsom salts, baths, but actually it's the heat that they're intolerant to. So just try with a bath with nothing in it and see how much you're able to tolerate. Like heat wise, see how hot you can handle it. See how long you can handle that heat. That alone causes so much healing. There's so much power, power in heat. I have another video somewhere about, about the, the healing power of heat and an article on the website as well, but not going into that today, but that could give you like a false positive, false negative. So you have to test the heat first. See if the heat is what's causing the reaction. Once we've ruled that variable out, you wanna start on a really small dose and you wanna build up gradually over time. And you wanna do it as fast as you can, but you wanna avoid any negative reactions. We're Goldilocks only this. So if you haven't watched my video on the Goldilocks zone, definitely go and watch it. It explains how you can adjust your dosage so that you only feel better while you're working your dose up with things. That's how you know you're doing it right. If you're getting reactions, you're either not doing enough or you're doing too much and you need to find your Goldilocks zone. So go and watch the video on how to do that. This is gonna look different for everyone. If you've got sulfur intolerance, you're literally gonna be starting probably on half of a teaspoon of Epsom salts dissolved in a full bath. And I know that sounds absolutely absurd, that is the level of tolerance that you may have and that's where you have to work. Like you don't get to control this process. You don't get to choose 
how much you're able to tolerate. If that's the reality of the situation, then do that. Just, just, just do it and build yourself up slowly. The, the place that I see most people getting stuck is they say like, oh, I did Epsom salts and like they didn't really make much difference. Most people stop at one to two cups in a bath and this is a big mistake. I have found consistently that the tipping point for most people is eight cups in a bath, eight to 10 cups. And this has to be daily. If you skip days, you do not get the same benefit. And I'm going to explain why to you now. Your body tries to adjust its metabolic functions based on the resources that it's provided with. So you see this often with things like functional nutritional deficiencies. If you provide your body, if your body has a big deficit for a certain nutrient and its workload is like here, because this is the maximum amount of work that it can do with the amount of nutrient that's being supplied. When you start to apply it with, to supply it with more of the nutrient, this maximum rate increases to match the new level of the nutrient. So the same thing happens with the Epsom salts. If your body is being provided with this on a consistent basis that it can rely on, it changes your genetic expression. Literally your genes change. Your metabolic function in your body changes. Your body starts to do different things. It runs differently because it has different resources available to it. And if you're doing like one bath here and then not, and then one the next day, and then you skip a day, or you do two a week, you're going to top up your tank of the magnesium and the sulfate, but you're not going to provide your body with this foundation that's going to let it swap into this different type of metabolic functioning. And this takes time. So you want to build the dose up as, as quickly as you're able to without having reactions. And then you need to hold it at the eight to 10 cups for about two months before you will actually know if this is really working or not. And at that point, you you may be feeling a lot better. You may be really noticing that you feel different. But the real test, the real trick is to then stop. So you've been doing it consistently. You do it for two months. You stop for two or three days. And then your metabolic function is now up here. And you stop providing the nutrient. Your body is like, oh, my God, I feel terrible. And you feel stressed. You feel dysregulated. Like your digestive system will become a mess. And then you know that sulfur is making a big difference for you. You know the Epsom salts are really working for you. And then you have to do it consistently. You have to stick with it. And you don't get to choose how long you get. You have to stick with it. For me, I had to do this consistently for about four years. And yes, it was inconvenient having to buy a, uh, a portable bathtub for when I was traveling. Yes, it was annoying arranging, arranging Epsom salts when I was in hotels when I was traveling. Like, I needed it. It's what I needed at the time. I stuck with it. And it really, really, really worked. It's one of those things that was an absolute game changer for me. And if you're in a place where you're struggling, or if you're even if you're doing Epsom salts, but maybe you're only like one or two cups, just bump it up, you know, bring it up to the eight to 10 cups and do it gradually and, and see what happens. And this isn't just my own personal experience. I've seen this over and over and over again with, with my clients. There is just, there's only so much science that can account for why this happens. Honestly, there's some magic in it too, but it really, really does work. It's one of those things that is just absolutely amazing. You just have to get the dosage right and the consistency right. So you're looking end game, eight to 10 cups every single day, ideally before bed, because that, that, that heat just before you go to bed actually cools your core body temperature down, which makes it easier for you to sleep. And that magnesium and that sulfate can get to work on your body while you're asleep. It's normal to feel tired afterwards. It's normal to feel a bit drained afterwards. Your body is going through a lot of stress with that heat and with all of those nutrients uptake. So doing it towards the end of the day can be helpful because you can chill afterwards. If it's negatively affecting your sleep, and that does happen for some people with the salicylates, oxalates, or sulfur problems, move it towards the beginning of the day so your body can work through those things and then you can still have a good night's sleep. Like messing your sleep up is a really bad idea for whatever's doing it. So never mess with your sleep. Your sleep is super important. So try and mix and match this. Try and um, Try it, see, see how it works for you. Again, there's no one size fits all. There's no one size cure, cures all for everyone. But I do find this has a really high success rate and it does work really well. There's some good science. There should be more science as to understanding how this works, but I found it very effective. My clients have found it very effective. And now you've got everything you need to see if it's gonna be effective for you. So if you do have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And I hope you found this really helpful and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. So now if anybody's actually watching live and has any questions, I will just uh, answer them. Don't know if we do. Oh yeah, cool. We've got a call. So here, Audrey Walker says, magnesium 3 in it is even better. It crosses the blood-brain barrier. Take, 
uh, taking it every night has been game-changing from stabling mast cells for me. So yeah, different forms of magnesium work in different ways in the body. My suggestion actually, for mag if you're going at this from a magnesium perspective, is to use a multi-form of magnesium. So I actually have a magnesium supplement just over there. I just can't reach it. It's got eight different forms of magnesium in there. And it's not sulfate. Sulfate is definitely better absorbed through your, through your skin. So it's different amino acid chelates. It's got magnesium threonate. It's got all of those different types of magnesium. So if you're going at it from that perspective, yeah, and you're using a supplement, I'd, I'd go for like a multi-magnesium. I find that to be really, really effective. But re the real benefits here that I really want to emphasize are in the sulfate. You know, the sulfate is super, super important. And magnesium sulfate has terrible digestive absorption. It's way, way better through the skin. So using it in Epsom salts is better. Plus it tastes horrible. Like I don't, I hope nobody ever has to taste that. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Uh, Suzanne Danielson, and if you have more questions, let me know. I'm doing questions now. Suzanne Danielson says, do you take bicarbonate in it as well? You can do. Um, it's not the same, it's, it's a completely different mechanism. Um, I don't even know how well sodium bicarbonate absorbs through the skin. So saying it does, supposing that it does, this could have an alkalizing effect on the body. And it's not that alkaline is good and acid is bad. It's that a lot of waste nutrients are very acidic in nature. Like all heavy metals are acidic, mycotoxins are acidic. They, they all have a, a, they're all like an acidic residue inside of the body. At the end of like producing energy from carbs and fats and stuff like that, you, you're left with acid waste and it needs to be bound with something alkaline to, to neutralize it. Your blood pH has to stay 7.7 .7 to 7.8 pH. Like if it moves even 0.1 out of that, like you die. So your blood pH is always staying very, very similar. But what, what this could do is it could allow your body to balance that easier. So it's not having to focus so hard on doing it. So it could be, it could be helpful from that perspective. This is something you could try if you struggle with like shortness of breath, for example. So w one of the ways that your body regulates this acid alkaline balance is by the amount of carbon dioxide inside your blood. So if you can provide alkalizing substances to your body, it can impact this regulatory mechanism that it has. When your body gets very acidic, it will start to leach minerals out of the bones. This is actually what's happening in sometimes in osteoporosis. When we've got um, too much uh, acidity happening, your body will borrow um, alkaline substances being minerals like calcium. It'll just take them from your bones because if you're, again, minerals in your bones is a problem for tomorrow. Blood pH is a problem today, right now, this second. If it varies too much, you die. So it's got that as a, as a reserve. So you can, you can, it's a completely different thing but there can be other benefits to it. It's not something that I personally use, but I have heard other people using it and I have heard that they found it effective. It can also be helpful for skin problems, some skin problems as well. So that alkaline effect is really uh, unhos inhospitable to certain organisms. So it can work well for certain types of fungus. They really don't like the strong alkalinity. Um, so it can be, can be helpful, but complete, completely different thing. But yeah, if it works for you, absolutely go for it. Andrew Muzza, nice to see you, Andrew. Hope you're doing well says, how long do you try and soak for? So I'm, I'm a bit of like a, I, I like efficiency. You know, if I'm going to spend money on something, I want to get like the maximum bang for my buck for it. So I usually end up staying in the bath for like an hour or longer if I can. And I usually start to like cool off by the time I get out. Like I have it as hot as I can handle it. And then it's cooling off before I get out. The, cause then you're getting the benefits of the heat and you're getting the maximum opportunity for absorption. I find that kind of the tipping point for like, the ratio of benefit to like time spent kind of is usually around 25 to 30 minutes for most people. At that point, your body's going to be topped up um, and you're, it, that's going to have been enough. Obviously, that, that may be too much for you at your stage. If, if it is too much, then do less. You know, do the maximum you can and still stay in the Goldilocks zone. But if you've got like time constraints, even 10 minutes is better than none. But I'd say like ideally 25 to 30 minutes is like kind of the sweet spot. And finally here, Dom, so Dom G says, foot baths. Nice to see you, Dom. Two lives in one day. You got me on both. Yeah, you can do foot baths. So that's still providing these, these minerals to your, to your body. Uh, if you don't have a, a bathtub uh, access or for some reason getting in the bathtub is hard for you, like if you have mobility problems or things like that, you can definitely use a foot bath instead. 
I'd still go for the water being as hot as possible. And you probably struggle to fit eight cups in the foot bath because there's less water. So what I would suggest is just go for saturation, like dissolve as much in there as possible. And like, obviously the hotter the water is, the more you'll be able to dissolve to dissolve in there. And the, the stronger the potency, the, the more you the, the better the absorption rate is going to be. So do it as hot as you can mix as much in as possible when it stops dissolving, then just stop putting it in. I'd say that probably you could probably still get like at least five or six cups in that. But again, same method as before, work up slowly, increase your dose slowly and um, go, go by how you feel. You know, if it's making you feel worse from doing it, you're pushing too far, slow down a little bit and um, go, go at your own pace. And uh, Ryan Owen says, thank you. You're most welcome, Ryan. Hope you found it really, really helpful and interesting. It's nice to, nice to have you here. Cool. Oh, got a question from Ryan here. So guess who's taking the, guess who's taking an Epsom salts bath today? This guy. Good, good to hear. So yeah, um, I know that, so yeah, it could be really help. So Ryan, you're saying this, it, it, it reminds me. Epsom salts, super helpful for your liver. Also super helpful for the gallbladder. Um, there's so many processes that happen in the liver and gall, gallbladder that use uh, sulfur, sulfur especially, super, super important. Like one of the, some of the supplements that really impact the, the liver and the, and the bile and the gallbladder, the, the reason that they help is they have sulfur in. So if you're thinking like NAC, Tudka, bile acids, these are all just full of sulfur. Sulfur is like uh, a, a game changer, super, super important for, for liver and gallbladder health. So yeah, let me know how that goes. Andrew says, I'm currently taking one. Nice. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I, I do, so, I, my Epsom salt baths are some of my most productive times. You know, if I've ever sent you a DM on Facebook or if I've responded to your email or um, sometimes even the Facebook posts I wrote, they, they, they happen in the bath. You know, it's super creative time for me. I find it's a really, 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 uh, really, really creative uh, time. Suzanne says, do you shower afterwards? So you can. I've heard some people say this helps with like to toxin elimination, like from the toxins that you sweat. The thing is, the thing about the thing about detox is a lot of the time, the what you think is happening is not how the detox is actually happening. Like you can think the Epsom salts are like drawing the toxins out of your body. That's not actually how it works. Your body absorbs the Epsom salts and it uses the magnesium and the sulfate in metabolic processes that actually enable you to remove toxins like through your bile and through your lymphatic system. It's not really coming out through your sweat. There will be some, and if you if you want to, you can. When I was really ill, I didn't. Like for me, I had I had POTS at the time, post postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And trying to stand up and shower after having been in a really hot bath, I would have just passed out when I'd have been on the floor. I'd literally get out of my hot Epsom salts bath and I'd just lay on the floor till I could cool down because the POTS was like too much for me. So now, if I can, like if I can be bothered and if I have the energy and I have the time, because it does drain your energy, even if you're quite healthy, having a really hot bath. Yeah, I'll shower it off, and because obviously you'll be sweating and you might you might smell a bit. But yeah, if you can, then do it. But if you can't, it doesn't mean you're not getting the detox benefits. Most of it isn't about you sweating and the toxins coming out that way. It's about you gaining those nutrients, those the minerals, the magnesium, the sulfate, and then using them in detoxification processes, and then excreting them through other pathways, like through your gut, through your urine, stuff like that. So not essential, but if you can, it's not going to hurt. Cool. I hope that was really helpful. That's the end of all the questions that we have. Hope you found that really helpful. Hope you found it really interesting. One of those amazing, amazing um, sort of like alternative, it's not even really a supplement. It's like an alternative therapy, alternative healing modality. And I love it. It's super helpful, almost universally applicable. You can, almost everyone can access it at some point. If it's even a tiny dose or if it's foot baths, you can normally always find some way to do it. And it, I mean, magnesium and sulfur, they're so important just to health and to, to the functioning of the human body. You, you really, it's really hard to go wrong. But obviously, caveat, if it's not for you right now, it's not for you right now. That is sometimes true. So if it's not, if it doesn't work for you right now, not doing it doesn't mean you're not going to heal. You'll find another way to heal. It's absolutely possible. Hope you find it really helpful. See you in the next one. Ciao.